Hey, what is uh, going on, everybody? Welcome to tonight's stream. If you're watching on 343 Labs channel, if you're watching on my channel, uh, welcome. We have a really cool thing for you tonight. I know it was a surprise for some of the people watching on my channel. And for 343 Labs, you guys are in for a treat because, you know, the teacher you know and love, the techno legend has come to bestow some knowledge on us tonight. Uh, John Selway is with us. He's going to show us his bag of tricks, some creative sound design techniques in Ableton Live, which is really cool. I want to take a minute to say, hey, what's up to people in chat? So Plank, Blank Poster over in 343 Labs chat, what is going on? Norbug, Manuel, Savage TV, what's up? Robot Dharma, nice to see you. Robot Dharma says people jamming on pots and pans outside right now. That's good. Norbug says it's 1 a.m. in Italy, but I can't resist. That's great. Hope you're staying safe. I know things are kind of wild out there in Italy. And Manuel says it's 16.05 in California, so they don't have to stay up too late. But John, how are you doing this evening? I'm good. Thanks. I'm, uh, you know, this is my first time out streaming live and... Uh, I mean, I've done radio before, so it's kind of similar to that. This it's, is modern radio. Yeah, yeah, you know, well, it's TV. It's uh, yeah, it's it's both. on walking on a on a tightrope, and uh, sure, it's a little different, like working in this situation. But I I'm excited by it. I think this is uh, it's a, a fun new thing to get into. Yeah, how is the uh, quarantine? Uh, you're in New York, right? Like, so you're at one of the more hectic areas, I presume. How is that all treating you? Well, we're doing fine. The family's fine. The kids are doing their online school. My wife is working. You know, her her job is solid, and she has Great. a lot on her plate. And uh, I alternate between uh, being house dad and teaching for 343 Labs and uh, doing private lessons and my own music production. So we keep busy, and uh, yeah, so far it's okay. The people, our friends and family are okay, and it's pretty quiet out there on the streets. I'm like the, I'm the guy that goes and does the errands. I'm the one that goes to the grocery and picks things up. And uh, 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 so, yeah, it's been actually it's been pretty busy. Uh, even though we're in, on lockdown, I have a lot to do. <laughs> I I am the same way. Uh, when you do like content and music, and I, especially you as a family man, like the the to do list just skyrocketed, and it doesn't ch it doesn't go down just because we're all stuck at home. Exactly. Um, yeah, so as John mentioned, he is a teacher at 343 Labs, and this stream tonight is brought to you by 343 Labs. For those of you who don't know from my community, I am the creative director for 343 Labs, which is an electronic music school in New York and online. So we recently converted all of our classes to being online classes. And, you know, not some of those online classes you've heard of before where it's like, oh, download a bunch of videos and follow along with the curriculum. No, it's really like a classroom approach to online learning where you can go into a virtual classroom with someone like John, um, learn a variety of topics from Ableton, all three levels of Ableton, beginner, intermediate, advanced, also logic, synthesis, and sound design, which is something we're going to be talking about today and a class that's going to be starting on Monday. So if you find what you hear today interesting or you like how John is teaching, it's definitely something you should consider. But uh, yeah, we've been still carrying on with our 343 Labs community throughout this quarantine and throughout this time. And we hope to continue to do that. And part of doing that is doing some of these live streams like we're doing tonight. So John, what do we got going on tonight? Good question. Well, I do a lot of different kinds of stuff. And, um, you know, I teach Ableton Live production courses at 343. And I also have a, sort of more of my own course called Synthesis. Well, it was Synthesis for, Synthesis for Producers. Now it's a sound design and Synthesis for Producers. Um, nice. Just sort of expands the, uh, the view of it. But generally, you know, the way I work is... Um, I kind of make sounds as I go. As occasionally I'll go and like, you know, play with sounds and save presets or whatever. But a lot of times the the synthesis, you know, the sound design, whatever you want to call it, you know, is in the moment of kind of composition. Like I will, you know, take the skills that I've learned over the years and using different types of instruments and effects processing and all uh, everything and come up with what I need in the moment. And, you know, I might sometimes have a, preconceived idea of what I want and then I'll you know go through the steps to get to it other times I'll let the process guide me to the creative result and um, 
go, going both those directions are super valuable for me. And also in, for teaching, I think it's good to get people sort of breaking out of their boxes a little bit with sounds. Um, Amazing. So that's sort of like what I like to, and then doing it all in the context of producing, like, you know, if, you know, synthesis is like, you know, making sounds from, you know, something like using an electronic instrument, a synthesizer to create sounds. Sound design can be broader than that, I would say. You know, you, you could have, sound design to me is sort of, you know, creating specific types of things um, in yeah. a way. Uh, well, anyway, it, or you might think of it as like making sound effects or movie sounds or game sounds. So you're super laser focused in the context of music. Yeah, like, pretty much. Yeah. So that's why the four producers tag on the end of it. It's not just synthesis or sound design. It's synthesis and sound design for like, you know, music producers, composers, artists, music, musical artists. And then the idea is to, you know, learn the language, understand the, the possibilities, like understand the different types of sounds and, and different t ways of synthesizing sounds and processing them. So you're aware, it's kind of like, um, like an artist with a palette of colors and textures, right? You get to know what all yeah. those colors and textures are, and then you can make creative decisions, you know, more confidently knowing like, oh, I want to use that type of synth for my bass and this type of effect for, you know, like, um, so... I, rather than teach like recipes A to Z, like one to one to ten, how to step by step make a, a specific sound. I mean, we do that sometimes, but I like to teach people to listen and be aware of the possibilities, and then make those choices on their own to lead them to their own unique thing. So that's how yeah. I work. And then, okay, that's the spiel. <laughs> um, <laughs> what I'm doing today, I have a couple of different projects I'm working on. I have one loaded up right now. Uh, it's a it's a sketch that I actually started while I was teaching, and we were looking into uh, physical modeling synthesis, which is lately I uh, I've been kind of leaning towards a lot in terms of my own new sounds that I'm making, and I'm you know I'm primarily using the Ableton Live's uh, physical model synths, uh, and and what do we mean when we say physical model of a synth? Well. It's not a physical, it's a synth that uses physical models to create sounds. So if you imagine, I mean, as simple as a hand clap, like okay. one hand hitting the other hand, you know, makes a sound or a drumstick hitting a, a drum or a bow on a violin or a, 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 a pick on a guitar. The materials, like the physical objects and how they sound, how they create, you know, how they create vibrations and how those vibrations resonate. Um, physical modeling synths, you know, recreate that digitally. And, okay. you know, so you might have, you know, like Live's uh, collision instrument is, you know, really good at physical f models of percussive sounds, right? So that, and right. so you have like an element that is causing the vibration and you have an element that is being vibrated by that thing. And then you can adjust all the parameters of those. So, I've been, that, that, that's sort of in a nutshell, the idea, the, sort of the, the general idea of, of physical modeling without getting way too technical. Um, For sure. So you want to dive into some collision? Yeah, well, let's, let's listen to what I have. And I guess the idea is that I'm going to play what I have and point out some of the stuff that I did and then uh, maybe add a couple of new elements to that and go through the process of how I create a sound while I'm creating a musical idea as I'm producing and composing. Awesome. Let's so do it. Let's see where I left off before we got started here. in and out so we hear the possibilities totally and while we're listening hey to everybody who just joined into chat we dip it in and out of chat so ask questions if you have them what's up manuel what's up al what's up adrian renee welcome
Juliana in the 3 Labs chat, welcome. What's going on, Paratosh? What's going on, Pat? Thanks for joining. Daryl from Cape Town, South Africa. Amazing. Nice to have you. All right. I think that kind of covers most of yeah. the possibilities I love- that I have sketched out already. I love that we started there and and just to get that uh, very base knowledge of physical modeling, like what that actually means in terms of synthesis, because I think a lot of the times the word synthesis or synth or whatever can conjure up a very clear idea, a very and a very um, not organic, a very artificial idea in your head. And what you have here, it's very much using synthesis to create very organic sounds. Well, that that's true I, for me. I like to find or these are these synths are, are they're physical models, so they have this inherent acoustic sort of organic character to them. But I like to push them a little bit and make and find this sort of space between realistic and synthetic. And you know, like it sounds kind of like a piano, but it's it's something else, you know. And it's it, it's got a detail to it. You know, sure, I could take a sample of a piano and put effects on it and make a weird sound that's sort of like a piano but um it's a different kind of result that you get with when you're processing audio recordings you know which samples are audio right so and somebody in the chat asked all all synths today no samples at all um yeah and i didn't play this project i I did uh, everything is synthesized the drums I created from scratch, the bass, the different melodic elements. There are a couple of audio files, but those are actually resamples of synthesizer sounds. Uh, wow. And then there's okay. one sample-based sound. This is a, a granular synth sound using Live's Granulator 2, where I, I took a little piece of one of the synths that I made and then turned it into a granulator sort of grainy spacey thing so that that's like a little bit of resampling there but nothing in here came from a sample pack or uh was recorded with a microphone at any point it all came from uh they were all synthesized and processed with effects awesome so chat um we're gonna dive into some of the nitty-gritty of this of what john wants to show and i see there's some questions coming in which is amazing so what's up pokey what's up ouchie ouchie what's going on um uh, Camille, I see your question. We'll we'll dive into that, but first, I want to have John take us in for a closer look on some of what's going on in this project. All right, I'm going to start with this first track, this ISO piano. I called it. I don't know why I called it that, because I feel isolated nowadays. You're but... a mad scientist. <laughs> I'm, yeah, actually, thinking about isolation, like I, I, not that I'm a homebody, but. My, my, as a family unit, we all enjoy sort of hunkering down and staying home and being together. Like, I guess we're, we, we all have a little bit of hermit in us. So this, my kids Same. are handling this isolation thing actually all right, considering, you know, and thank the, the universe that we have. Thank the maker. Thank every, whatever, for, like that we all have this way of communicating with each other. Like my kids see their friends every day, even though they can't be together. So at, anyway. Let's get back to this. Um, the ISO ha- piano. The ISO piano, right? So I'm using Live's electric uh, instrument. And I'll go ahead and just load up the default, right? So this is a physical model of an electric piano. It's basically designed to sound like a Wurlitzer or a Fender Rhodes style electric piano. And here, let's see. I can zoom in on this a little bit so you can see the controls a little bit better. So it, this nice. is the simplest physical modeling uh, instrument that Live provides. 
And uh, it's got a few different sections. You can kind of see there's the mallet. Gosh, I got to move it out so it's not covered by our little images there. The mallet, right? So inside of a, of a piano or an electric piano, you know, like you hit a key, right? And it's mechanical. Yep. The key causes a hammer to strike. In an, an acoustic piano, it's hitting a string. In an electric piano, it's hitting a metal bar, basically, uh, and it, which in here is represented by the fork. Right, so we have the mallet, which is causing the vibration, and we have the fork that is vibrated by the, the mallet striking it. And the, the composition of the mallet, whether it's stiff or soft or hard or noisy or whatever, like that causes different changes to the tone. And then also the fork may have different characters. It might be like, you know, old and, and sort of janky and detuned and clanky, or it could be more kind of clean and pretty and in tune and more like uh, sort of sort of clear sounding. And you can find a space between those and create interesting tones. So you can change the color, you know, the bright to dark of the tine and the tone and how, you know, basically you, when a percussive instrument, a, a piano, an electric piano is a percussive instrument, you hit it and the sound dies away. So you can choose how quickly all those elements of the sound die away. Uh, and then the damper, you know, in an acoustic piano, you have these dampers that stop the strings vibrating, uh, vibrating. Same thing in an electric piano. There's some pads that kind of stop the bars. When you let go of the key, the bar, the, the bar stop vibrating and it dampens the sound. So you can also choose how that sounds, how quickly it dampens, whether it dampens in a noisy way or in a smooth way. Uh, then you have the pickup section, which is, you know, the amplification part. It's an electroacoustic instrument, electric piano. So the the vibrations of the the bars are being uh, uh, amplified. They're being picked up, like something like a, what would be, you see on a guitar, just like a little electromagnetic thing, and it turns the vibration of that metal bar into uh, a voltage, you know, into a signal that can be amplified, and we that gets turned back into sound when it's uh, coming out of a speaker. So the pickup determines like where. I mean, uh, how close the pickups are to the strings, how sensitive it is. Uh, it has a little preamplifier, so you can kind of distort it. Uh, and that's pretty much it. It's really simple. So if I start, uh, ooh, let's solo that so you can hear it. And it's just like generic. Uh, generic sort of dinky electric piano. Um, but what I like to do when I'm sound designing with it is break the model. That's the whole thing for me with physical modeling is push the model to its extremes where it like makes something it's not supposed to make. It's kind of like uh, with like acoustic, like with like with an acoustic uh, pianos, people prepare pianos. I'll put like metal and things that vibrate and they'll like ping pong scra balls, scra scrape the strings with stuff. So it's kind of yeah. like that. You're like taking this physical thing and pushing the boundaries of it. And right there, to me, that sounds like techno already. <laughs> like right, literally, yeah. uh, I mean, that this, is metallic. Gonna, this isn't necessarily going to be something that I, I put into this track I'm working on, but it, as soon as I hear something that sort of strikes my ear, I s try to start being creative with it. So I'm literally just going to just, I'm going to do like a, a fast 16th note sort of techno-ish uh, rhythm, right? And um, I'm going to use some, some tricks to make it interesting quickly. I'll use lives. Here we go. <laughs> a velocity midi effect so you know I, I drew in all these all these notes and it's just one note but i'm going to go in and randomize the velocities of each of that note those notes and it's going to already this is the gold one. Oh. all right did you hear how it just sort of went out of control Ooh. there yeah these are touchy you got to be careful <laughs> gotta be careful. You gotta treat him right. Gotta be careful. Yeah, it's not. Well, I was even impressed, you like how 
just adding that randomness of the velocity takes a one note line and makes it something that you can immediately start making musical. Just that change in dynamics. Yeah, it's it's not working the way I wanted it to, to be honest. Um, let's see if I can... There we go. Let's look for... Uh, I want some happy accidents. I want it to, like, suddenly just do something cool. That's better. All right, that's getting more into it. It's getting a little like more defined and percussive. Um, I'm gonna just throw in some kind of crazy yeah. delay. Also, we should say Ableton Live Suite, the full version, free for 90 days right now on Ableton.com. I like that. Like, that is not an electric piano. See what I mean? Right. Yeah. <laughs> so and that, also, me, uh, yeah, go ahead. Well, well, one thing I was going to bring up is like you embrace randomness and chance and like you said, happy accidents. Can you just talk about that in your process a little? Because you went right there. You went right to like, let's throw the velocity on, crank up the random, let's start tweaking stuff and hope something cool happens. Is that a general part of your process all the time? Especially for making techno, yes. Yeah. Um, I can do more defined melodic things with randomness and you'll be more subtle about it. But when I'm just like throwing, I, when I'm making more kind of noisy, weird sounds for techno or for sound effects or for like, you know, ambient or experimental, whatever, um, I tend to be less cautious and just go kind of just throw it out and tweak knobs and, you know, it helps to know what the knobs do ahead of time. Um, and to, yeah. to be methodical about it, you know, and I guess that's what the course would be for is like, you know, knowing what all those knobs do and then you can go home and play with it with some, with some right. confidence. Um, but yeah, it's really, I, I, I want to capture an attitude in the moment. And that's why I was like instantly, I'm like, all right, that thing, good. Throw an effect on it. Right. Just like move on to the next part. And then and it's fast. You're not like getting caught up. You're exactly. not getting too stuck on a, on a specific timbre or something. Right. Uh, I may go back and do that later. Like what if I might right. like, build a whole track like this and then there's all this crazy stuff going on and I have to like subtract from it and sculpt back sure. down into something more cohesive. Um, but anyway, I just, I thought that was a good quick example of like, you know, this breaking the model idea of using, you know, again, this is a, a nice pretty electric piano usually. And it's got, I, I never even like the presets that this comes with just for doing like nice chords or whatever uh are great so usually if i was like working on something that called for like a, a just you know a typical electric piano part i would just go to the presets and maybe tweak them a little uh yeah. but otherwise if i use electric it's going to be doing something like that where i i i break it and i do something weird with it uh awesome. that, that said let me just go and point out what i did with this this is a more musical part can we hear that um that clip Again, can we just hear what it sounds like again? The uh, ISO piano. Uh, the first one. Yeah. Going back to the, the actual. Yeah. Yeah. It's a little closer to electric piano land. It is. And basically what I'm doing with this is, I mean, all right, it's highly uh, processed. There's the auto pan and the amp emulation for distortion and the EQ. And then there's another uh, echo uh, effect and a lot of compression and then this one you heard when I changed the stiffness it kind of you know it makes it more aggressive or less aggressive so that's something I can play with in the arrangement I might you know map a MIDI knob to it or uh, create some automation Right, and that's a, a more uh, traditional use of an electric piano to play nice chords, except that I'm I'm breaking it by doing stuff you can't do with an real electric piano, by like tweaking it in real time and, and kind of sort of 
destroying the sound in a nice way. Right. And I can be expressive also, hearing, with that. Hearing a real springy reverb, is that the echo on there? It sounded great. Yeah, that's, that's you know, it's funny. I, I When I teach, I usually don't take too much time. You know, if I'm talking about the synthesizer more than the effects processing, I'll just throw presets on. And th so this happens to be a For preset sure. from the library. But yeah, here's what it sounds like without the, the echo and the reverb. So it, you know, this makes it really interesting. <laughs> the the textures yeah. that come from the, it's actually I'm overdriving it a little bit, so it's dirty. It's giving some crunch to it, and then, you know, you have the this filtered sort of analog tape style delay happening, and some reverb, and that makes it work really well. Actually, yeah. I think I wrote the chord progression with the effects on, and it kind of, it was like a call and response between like the chords and then not playing the chords when the echo comes out. Cool. So that's great. Let's chat is a, I'm going to dip into chat for a moment. Uh -huh. Um, Blake poster says, happy to see you, John, super happy. Through for three labs, putting this together for the stream. You have fans. Nice. Happy to be here. A huge Selway fan for years. Awesome. Nice that's to hear that. Pat, Thank you. The chat. Yeah. we got some nice stuff going on in the chat and over here we have new people jumping in KGP. What's going on? Mr. Ravioli. What's up? We got a funny names today. Slithery slime. I love it. It's great. <laughs> we got we got two different crowds in these different chats. That's for sure. Right. Um, so stoked that you guys could all be here tonight. If you guys have questions for John along the way, or requests and all that, we did have one request for chat. And if it's too much of a diversion, we can uh, kind of take it on later. But um, Paratosh asks, would love to see how to design an ambient drone sound from huh. scratch, if possible. It is possible. Um, I think that's a, that's a Selway special right there. I mean, I've, I'm not like very well known for making ambient music, but I, I, I like doing it and I've done it and, uh, there's so many different ways we could go into it. Um, let's go what? with the simplest way. Like the, the most, like, uh, yeah, the, the just right. the most, so I'm going to show you, down, I'll basically. show you one thing that I, I, I used to do this with, uh, I would do this when I played back. This is going back to the nineties. Literally I would, um, uh, Abe Duque and I, you know, Abe started this thing called Rancho Relaxo and a bunch of our friends and myself and Abe would perform live ambient and weird stuff together. And that's a whole big long story you could ask Abe about someday. But um, everybody's, well, a lot of people are probably familiar with like a, a Roland TB303. Yeah. Yeah, I would say so. That's and pretty. It's sort of a, area, this very famous, this acid synth, you know, that everybody uses for bass lines and tweaky stuff for techno and house and everything. Um, you know, I, I have a real one. It's it's, it's back in the other room. You know, I'll just throw on the the audio realism, the ABL three audio realism baseline three, which is a software version of the three hundred three. You know, just oh, to cool. quickly remind everybody of what these things sound like. All right, so what I would do is... Sorry, it's since it's not a real 303 and it's like synced with the... Uh, synced with, with the, the host yeah so it's not yeah. normally what i would do is speed up i would make some crazy pattern some sort of random pattern and speed the tempo with the 303 all the way up as fast as it would go almost to the point that you can't hear the difference between the notes it'd just be like uh. like that and then i would run and then i would create these crazy textures and then run that through like reverb and whatever other effects so we could crank live's tempo now we could so what i'm going to do the abl3 has this nice little random feature. Here we go. Random again. That that sounded that sounded really cool just like all <laughs> by itself. Yeah. Alright, all right, it's kinda it's kinda clicky. A real three oh three wouldn't be clicky like that. Yeah. Right, 
Right. So you can already, that's already really, really intense. And if I were to sort of work out a, a, a nicer, more melodic pattern, actually, let's, let's be a little more specific about that. Let's speed, slow down a little bit. Yeah, it's just going way too random, isn't it? We got to work this out, man. All right. right. I'm going to find so something. So, Joan, you're probably looking for more, uh, like, consonants a little more, a little less tension. All right. What you can do is you can turn these notes off and only have it limited just to those notes. Yeah, there we go. That's better. And you've got those octave up and down that'll just occasionally throw a note higher or lower by an octave. And this becomes a drone? Yes, you'll see. Turn it down a little bit. Okay. Ow. <laughs> nice. Sorry about the feedback. So you're washing it out. You're kind of creating this harmonic texture with this really crazy fast sequence. And yeah. then you're applying, you know, reverb or delay. And we can modulate the delay time a little bit. Modulate the filter sweeping up and down a little bit. So it's like, it's a drone, but it has this like intense energy underneath it from the fast sequence. It's amazing because when you think drone, you tend to think long long tones it's not the direction i thought you would go in to make a drone but well, you started i'm with using the reverb and the delay to make the long yeah tones i mean another thing you can do nowadays you know back then i didn't have something like this but if if you use like a granular pitch shifting sort of delay It's a little noisy, actually. It's going in a noisy direction because of the reverb, but and the yeah. the granular element, but yeah. So, the, so if I go to Rancho Relaxo on a Friday night, <laughs> this is what I can expect to hear. Well, it wasn't always relaxing ambient. Sometimes it was uh, kind of uh, confrontational. <laughs> it's confrontational like a, it ambient. Was, it was like New a, genre. It, it was kind of like an art project. No, we nice. would. Uh, it would be chill, and then it would get intense. That was really cool. And um, Paratash, who requested that, was like, this is a crazy way to do this. Really good to know this. So I think cool. uh, people are liking seeing that approach to yeah. the drone. But we can probably dive back into some of the stuff we were talking about before.
Well, all right. So what I thought about doing was um, going over another sort of physical model thing and then um, and then switch over to a different project where I've got some other stuff going on. And, and actually, really, I just want to share this track that I'm working on because I'm kind of happy with how it's going. But yeah, let's totally. get... And um, don't forget that your tempo is still at 306. Ah, thanks uh, for the reminder. I was going to let it just fly, <laughs> but I was like, I don't know what could happen. <laughs> Woo! Uh... All right, so I'll show you a couple of things, but let's look at one of these physical model sounds in more in the context of what it's supposed to do. So for this, sure. for example, which sounds like a conga or some other kind of hand yep. drum, right? But it's not a sample. You know, you when I listen to it instantly, I hear it's not a sample, but I, I, I think you have to have probably some some experience with making sounds like this to instantly recognize that it's not, you know, cause when it's in the mix, that bass is crazy. It sounds fairly realistic when it's in the context of the beat. Um, but let me just show you how this is working. So, so again, like the electric piano, you've got uh, the, the electric uh, instrument. This one's collision, right? So collision is something hitting something else, right? So you have the mallet, and that's hitting. Uh, well, it's actually what it's doing is it's causing uh, this resonator to vibrate. Uh, and the resonator has various physical models in it. You have different you know, types of things that vibrate. A beam... A, you know, marimba is just like beam, but it's, you know, it's sort of got a different tuning Wood. to it. Yeah. 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 Wood, but it could also be like a xylophone. It can, it's, it's in that ah. realm of like a bar of metal or a bar of wood that vibrates when you hit it. Uh, string, right? There are percussive string instruments and this has a string model in it. Membrane is going to be like the drum head, like some, some thin thing stretched across uh, a cylinder or whatever. And then you have plates, which is similar to membrane, but it's a big square thing and it's probably more dense. And then you have pipe and tube. And these, you know, if you imagine, like, if you ever, like, held up a, a PVC tube and went, well, you know, that's what it sounds like. Uh, and so, you know, you get different sort of tonal characters out of each of those models. Uh, so I'm using membrane. We get and, that nice natural conga sound. Well, I had to tune it that way. Like, uh, I'll, I'm going to, uh, I'll end up, like, making, I'll break it and then put it back. So playing nice. around with the mallet. There's a noise element, so it's loses it's the kind of t -t 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 part of it, the, the white the noise hand part of it. The it's like the membrane, slap a little yeah. bit, right? Yeah, the slap. And then you can have, there's a, a less stiff mallet and a, a harder, thinner mallet. It starts to get that, like, more, I don't know, brighter, pointy. thinner, pointy. Yeah, it's pointy. You yeah. saw me go like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I keep looking at the wrong camera, by the way. That's why I'm, like, over here, over here. Uh. Um, all right, so there's that. So you can kind of make it more knocky or softer and deeper. And then you have this noise element that gives it that little bit of a slap. And then the color changes the character of the noise. And that sounds a little more brushy. You know, like if you ever, if, if any of your drummers out there, if you ever used a wire brush on a snare, it kind of goes, when you hit it instead of a, like a pop. So you can do that with the color and the noise. So I just have a, a little bit of noise. Right, I have I can tune the resonator, whatever pitch I want, or fine tune it. Um, let's jump over to the actual physical model. So the thing that's making that tone, I can control the decay of it. It rings out longer, but you know, on a drum like this, it's it's bright for a short time and then it fades away quickly. So I wouldn't want a long decay. That sounds. That's a different kind of a drum. So yeah, it's like a, it's like a barrel, metal barrel. Right. So that's how long it decays, and then the material control makes it brighter or darker. So like, right now it's rolling off. The the higher frequencies are going away more quickly, and the lower ones are ringing out a little bit longer. But then the other way, it's easier to hear with a longer decay. Oh, yeah. There you go. 
So now you can hear that the lower frequencies are going away and it sounds more bright. All right, then the ratio and the brightness and the inharmonics, you know, there's all these frequencies contained in that sound. And you can shift them higher, shift them lower, detune them, make them more noisy, less noisy, or not noisy so as much as inharmonic or harmonic. Like it can sound like a bunch of random tones, like a piece of metal when you hit it, so it's clangy. Or you can make them more in tune with each other, and it sounds more kind of nice and clear, like a musical note. Like... Now when I have it, you know, the inharmonic set lower, you hear more of a one pitch happening most of the time. So, you know, that's sort of in a nutshell what's happening. There's a lot of other little details you can get into. And then how you control the sound, like velocity and key tracking is important. So, like, you can have this sound be different depending on whether you play a higher note or a lower note. So, like, the tone of sound will change along with the, the pitch of the note. So, if you look up my MIDI, you can see there's some, you know, there's the high ones and the low ones. And the high ones are like those little slaps. And the low ones are more of the main con the conga tone. And then the... The higher notes have a higher velocity, and the lower notes have a lower velocity. And then looking at this, if I look at this, I've got velocity controls for different elements. So I can have the material change, and I can have the decay change, and uh, the, in, um, the inharmonic tuning can change depending on the velocity. Just like it would for a normal drum. Yeah, exactly. So I kind of I broke the sound a little bit, but you can hear that the lower notes are ringing out longer, and the higher notes are short and clicky. Yeah. And I, that's that's because the high notes are 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 making the decay shorter, uh, because the velocity is going that direction, right? It's going negative, and it's bringing the decay down on the higher notes. Ben, um, ben Ang asks, uh, how metallic can you get this sound? This sound. He was we were doing like the metal barrel, like when when uh, I forget oh. what we were mess what you were messing with, but it, it went closer to like steel pan, like barrel kind of drum sound. Well, well let's do it. I'm gonna turn it down a little bit because it's getting bright. Oh, that's like a gong. Yeah. Getting there. Yeah. Gamelon almost. Yeah, so yeah, it's like I have some kind of crazy gamelon type bell instrument now. It's not a conga anymore. And it's the same model. It's the membrane. Um, another thing you can do with this, in addition to the the, the mallet strike, you can just do continuous noise. And that actually can get you a lot brighter. So. It's getting weird in here, man. <laughs> yeah, it's getting weird. Well, that that just shows like the how deep you can go. Mm -hmm. Like you can go from having like just traditional you can go and recreate a sound you've heard or you can just break it and make something new and chaotic. Well, I definitely broke that that conga and like what <laughs> I just made here, you know, with this this would be like I, I if I was in in a session and I did that by accident, I, I don't always do this, but I try to remind myself to always like stop and resample something to audio bec or say yeah. the preset. Like I may not, this may not be what I want for this track, but that's a cool sound I just made by accident. So, yeah. you know, resample it. And so you have it, throw it in your library or, you know, save a preset in the, in the synth that you're playing with. And then you can always go back to it. Like, that's awesome for like a soundtrack or. For sure. Or a, a weird like ambient a texture. It's just a beautiful piece. texture. Yeah. yeah. And then let's hear that one really low. Oh, yeah. That's God breathing. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a giant, giant's exhale. Yeah. So anyway, this kind of stuff is what lately I have been really fascinated with getting to know more deeply is like this physical modeling and making sounds that are like, you know, they kind of trick your brain a little bit. Like, that's not real, but it has this interesting organic and acoustic flavor to it. And then 
applying that to styles of music that aren't typically done with electronic instrument with acoustic instruments and like finding this line like and have it be like you know making a house track like i was working on here but it's got an, a little bit of an acoustic character but it also is kind of futuristic and kind of tacky a little bit a little minimal a little psychedelic trippiness to right. it but having this familiar organic texture as well and what we kind of just heard from these two examples is it, it seems like your fluency in this synthesis is very inspiring because it seems like I, I think of this in terms of like theory right if i hear a song i can hear the chord progression i can hear the harmony i can identify it all are you hearing are you able to break things down on that level on a sound design level you know like if you hear a sound are you like, okay, that's got to be, I could do that with a physically modeled something, something I could use collision, whatever, whatever. Like, is that the level of fluency you kind of have? Um, getting there. And that's because that's it's actually like perfect uh, pitch, but for sound design, sort like, of. I don't know. It's yeah. the, the ear, the, the focus on the listening and the details and being able to discern like what possibly made that texture or made that type of sound, you know, for sure is it, for definitely what I want to help people in my classes get a hang of a little bit is how to start right. listening to those details. And like, you know, with, with, with a synthesizer, you can hit one note that sounds like an orchestra and has all the frequencies of like a symphony in it, literally. For like, sure. So, and sometimes when you listen to electronic music and you're getting into learning how to, to create your own and you don't know, like, is that sound, is that two instruments playing or is that one, you know, it, it's, and then is that like, you know, learning to understand like what waveform comes out of the oscillator that can do that. That's that yeah. kind of listening in de de detail is definitely something that I pretty well practiced at. And then I like to teach people how to start doing. Amazing. I have a, from chat, I have a question, uh, more of a music business kind of question. And All you're right. somebody who's definitely been around the block I've in terms there. of music <laughs> business. Yeah. Um, Faye, Fake Kelmis, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing that, asks, what would be a way for a producer to start looking for labels to release music with or do it by yourself on Spotify and et cetera? Nowadays, so I, guess, I know this is a big question and we could do a whole chat just about this kind of stuff. Um, right, but you're somebody who's lived it. So you've done the label route. Mm -hmm. And I, I have to say, now here we are in 2020. I will, I will make an admission that <laughs> The barrier to entry was different back when I started right. being a professional yeah. electronic music producer, let's say. Like when I got my first records out was, you know, 1992. And you could almost count on your hands. I was born then, John. It's perfect. I'm <laughs> okay, thanks for making me feel really old. <laughs> well, lovely. Um, no, I'm young at heart. So, uh, so I could almost count on my hands how many like notable techno producer techno producers were in the United States and like getting out of the United States and getting records out and g traveling and other people were playing their music. Like it was so much smaller. So I, I don't envy anyone now getting started. It is tough because there's so many more people doing it. But the flip side right. of that of course is it's, it's let's say it's harder to get people to notice you now. It's much easier sure. to like, media and mar and marketing yourself and making connections so what it always comes back to for me is because there's such a flood and you know if you're really serious about making an impact with your music first and you're not you know you might be going out there for different reasons some people are promoting their music to get dj gigs that's a different story right if you just want people to listen to your music you got to start small and you've got to take your time even though you might feel anxious to like jump out there and put everything you ever did up on soundcloud and get go on to distro kid and put streaming 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 everywhere i i think you should try to take a breath and work on your craft and work on your production skills and work on your writing skills and what all the things you need to do and you know don't put something out there until it's at reached a certain level where you have a fighting chance that people will go, Oh, that's actually pretty cool. And it doesn't happen fast for everybody. It's not fair. You know, some people just get it and they put their first thing out and everybody's like, wow, this is great. And they get some hype and then they're on social media and then they're shared everywhere and then they have a career. Um, it doesn't work that way for most people. That's like winning the lottery. 
So right. I think I'm not saying don't make lots of music. I'm saying make as much music as you can and get as good as you can and approach labels when you you are confident that you've reached a certain point. Don't send them stuff if you're not sure that you're there yet. And, you know, how do you know you're there? Like, try to get your friends to be honest with you. Come to, you know, 343 Labs feedback site, copy, I'm bit, learn by listening, and then apply those ideas that you yeah. create, ideas that you get. But don't be in a rush to, like, send out your stuff to every label. And put the stuff out that you are most confident in. And, like, start small. Share with people who are close to you and then grow from there. And the final thing For I'll sure. say and on I it is... Even though social networking is like such a big, huge part of everything, personal relationships always come first. So like when, when I started, it was meeting people in person. Okay, now we're all isolated. So Abe, it's not the same. Abe talked about that too. Yeah, but last like, time we talked about that, Abe talked about that in-person connection. And you know, one-on-one, it doesn't necessarily have to be physically in the same room, but like direct one-on-one -on -one connections to people of a like mind that are interested in what you're doing and you... and organically like not forcing yourself on people like hey listen to my demo hey listen to my demo like you meet someone they're interesting they're also making music you 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 establish a, a rapport and a relationship and then something comes of it and then and then you end up from there learning from that person and that person ends up learning from you and it becomes this exchange and people artists lifting each other up and the other thing i'll say about the the label thing is now with social media and what you said before about how everybody has easier access, everybody can get stuff out there. So it makes very little sense for a label to take on an artist that doesn't already have some type of social media following or something, which is not to say prioritize the social media following, but it's to say that you, you can build up your own community and then approach labels. I don't. I don't think there's not a lot of labels out there these days. Just uh, sign in unknown artists. Well, you know, with, they will if, but they know about them through someone that they trust, or uh, it's or you know, it's it's still social connections that gets that. You know, you might be new, and you just did a track that every you know that your friends love it, and then they play it for their friends, and they love it, and then you start to realize, oh, there's I got something here, and then it, it gets into the hands of someone. But it's all through who knows who. Who you right. know or who your friend knows, and I, I really think like for like in terms of quality and longevity, like letting it grow organically like that instead of like shooting for the top first, is it you know you might get lucky if you keep shooting as high as you can and then you stick, you know the shot and then you you get that lottery winning hit, but that'll get exhausting after a while. But that's like I think, you know. Grow. Start small and grow. Start with your community, yeah. your friends, you know, whether online or once we're all free to leave our places and congregate again, you know, throw parties, throw, perform for your friends. Rancho Relaxo. Go to Rancho Relaxo and say hi to Abe Duque and maybe he'll put your record out, you know. <laughs> for sure. All right. You want to jump back into some crazy sound design stuff? I do. Um, I think let's switch gears a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and open up a different project. A little bit of a different focus. Reading, I'm reading all the project names. I'm going through them all right now. Arr, reading all your secrets. Don't look too close. <laughs> um, what am I looking for? This one is a. It's a definitely a working title. Oh, I didn't save it. Uh, it's okay. Oh no. I'll make them again. So. Yeah, we had some good feedback in the chat. That's the key: knowing someone, and an introduction, and then it takes off from there. Yeah. Right. I mean, but definitely no. It, before that, it's make music. So all the time and keep doing it until you're good <laughs> and yep. then introduce yourself to the world when you know this, I've got something good. It's also a humbleness, a humbleness too. Not that I want to get stuck on this idea, but, uh, yeah. you just be humble that if you're learning and growing, it's okay to show somebody something and say, Hey, I'm still learning. That's what do you true. think of like, generally, what do you think of this? Not like I have the next billboard hot 100 sure number one hit you know sure. i think there's a big difference there and then you know communities like 343 labs and like getting into getting in with a group of people that make good music and can help you make good music you know whether you sign up for a class or whether you're just going to things like checking out things like this and you know obviously is part of the process um, and there's people in the chat now, people in the chat, you can be talking to each other. We're, we're all obviously attracted to this stream for some reason, one reason or another. So we're all probably uh, in this together. And a lot of us are probably in similar points in our journey. So connect with people in the chat. And I also have 
my own Discord channel that people are in. So people are here from that. 343 Labs has lots of free events like this that you can jump in the chat and talk to people, you know. Oh, Dave Turov says, John, you're the wind beneath my wings. Dave. Oh, Dave's a really wow. good old friend. Nice to hear from Dave. We he he and I ran a record label together for a long time. And awesome. uh, so that's excellent, Dave. Hi. Um <laughs> oh was it your birthday recently? No. Anyway. Let's listen to some music. We won't talk about his birthday. <laughs> I'm just teasing, Dave. It's the only time I ever see him. If, if anyone caught the very beginning, uh, when we were when the, the when we had the the pre-roll sort of uh, intro, this is what was playing in the background nice. at the very beginning. So it's a track I'm working on. As of this week, this is all brand new. And this is kind of like, you know, this is what it looks like when I'm not teaching. Also, folks, we're about an hour into the show tonight. We're going to be going on for another 30. If you're liking what you're hearing, John has a synthesis and sound design course starting next week. So just go to 343 Labs. You can look at the free events we have. You can also look at the courses that are available. All levels, all that stuff. If you like what you're hearing today. Check the link in the description, the 343 lab site. Also, it's going to be coming up in chat in a moment. And a, uh, a Blade Runner vibe from that top line string. Funny you should say that. No, so, oh. um, well, first of all, I want to point out, like, the tonal sort of world that is, this track has is very different from the last one, right? Like, there's no yeah, that, for sure. you know, sort of pseudo-acoustic organic vibe. This is very, like, synthesizer. Synthesis. <laughs> yeah, right? synthesis. And, and I'm tr one of the things I was doing with this is uh, trying out a couple of these Arturia the collection since that I've had installed but hadn't explored yet. And I'll be full disclosure, I didn't make these sounds. This is me just producing and like I want a pad and I want it to sound like a Vangelis Blade Runner uh sound. Right. Uh so there's and actually uh you know he was famous for using is it Vangelis or Vangelis? Can anybody I, I don't know. I was thinking Vangelis, but I was hey. deferring to you after I heard you say it. Look at this thing. It's ridiculous. The interface for this Whoa. is like I have to be honest, I don't love, like, pictures of hardware interfaces. <laughs> I would rather this be yeah. easy. Like, it's really hard to control this because it's just these tiny little faders with your mouse. And your it's like or... Reason where you can, like, go yeah. and look at the back of the machines well, and, like, unplug stuff I mean, and patch stuff. A, this in. has a hidden thing, but, yeah, right. it's kind of like it doesn't need to look... It... I mean, it does for, for it's cool. It like I finally. I'm own, surprised like, a, to hear that opinion from you as a purist. I'm not as a no. I am are. so not a purist. Thank you very much. So not a purist. No, because okay. I will make music with whatever I have. True. And you know, back when I started, I didn't have all this cool, amazing world universe of sounds at my disposal for almost free, right? Like, 
like you, it's just anything, right? But um, right, it was I was limited to what I could find and afford. And I there's you know this uh, the hardware version of this back then you know even back then it's thousands of dollars. It's also CPU hungry. You know, my 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 CPU starts right. bugging out when I play big chords on this. But yeah, this this is part of the Van, Vangelis Vangelis uh, vibe. You know, it's it's barely processed. There's a little bit of chorus and delay built into it, and then I added even more delay onto it because I always do that. Of course. And it's just so nice how it is that, like, this is the kind of sound that I don't always need to design. Like, I could come up with this or very close to it, but someone already did. And I, I like pointing Where that out. Where did you draw that line? I, I think that that's a question for you because you are so like I can dive in and make it. So where's the line between you're gonna make it or you're gonna try to grab a preset it, and mess with it? A couple things, like in the example before of like using the electric piano, like the live's electric device is a physical model of an electric piano, and the presets sound perfect for like a nice, you know, if I'm doing like I'm not I'm not writing '70s ballads, but like if I was, I'd probably load up one of those electric pianos, and they they're 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 good and they're very clean and they're that well pro they have nice effects on the on the effects racks and everything um so if i th that's one example is when when it's a sound that it's already what it is it needs to be and i don't need to do it again and as a okay. producer i'm just choosing that sound like i want an electric piano right now or i want this type of you know i can emulate a 303 with almost any subtractive synthesizer and make it sound fairly close but, you know, still not exactly right. But the little, little details. Sometimes when you want the perfect 303 emulation, you got to load up. They have the real thing or you get the good plugin that does a really good job of emulating that gets all the details right. So, and then it also comes down to speed. You know, I, I wanted a certain vibe with this sound. And I also, like I said, I was like, oh, let's try out some of these Arturia synths today. Because I was already knew I wanted to go for this kind of vintage uh, soundscape, you know, soundtracky sort of expansive uh, vibe, and I you, I already know that the CS eighty V is really good at that, having this kind of rich analog character and these really buttery sounding filters, and you know, and I just was going through the presets and. Rather than spend time starting from scratch, I went. I just found a sound that was as close to what I was imagining, and then tweaked it a little bit to make it fit in my mix in my musical idea, right. and that's it. So that's that's the line. I think it's like it's either something so specific that you just grab it how it is, or you're working fast and you want to get it done, and you make that choice as a producer and a composer. It's like that's my sound that I want for this and that, and then you, that's it. Yeah. Like working, cool. working fast for, with a specific goal in mind is when I would lead more towards starting with presets. And I suppose the like the stuff we were doing with messing with the collision and all that in the last project is more you want to do more experimental stuff. You want to go out there. It's it's more about like even what you were doing with the the velocity randomness and making that kind of a uh, repetitive stuff the the techno kind of stuff. Yeah, definitely. I guess it, it's also st it's more improvisational. Style. Yeah. It, it, you know, what I'm doing here, like, you know, this is, uh, how do we describe this? I mean, I call this electro, these kind of beats. Um, you know, if I take out all the, the pretty synthesizers and just go down to the beats. Um, wow. <laughs> just that. It's like craft work, numbers. Right. Planet Rock, everybody knows those. And, you know, I, I have always loved these type of, you know, electro, and I don't mean electro house or any kind of electro EDM, whatever. I When I say electro, this is what I'm talking about. <laughs> it's like Kraftwerk, Planet Rock, or, you know, if you're thinking about like Detroit Techno and electro, like Doppler effect, that, that kind of line. Of, of, of music is just an eternal love of mine these kinds of beats um, and then it crosses over a little bit into breaks sometimes lately i'm really into a lot of new kind of i mean 
for lack of a better indicator, if you go on like Beatport and go into the left field house and techno section, there's a bunch of like weird, more experimental or sort of underground sounding breaks and electro mixed in with the house and techno. And I like a lot of that stuff. I, and I like a lot of the kind of UK based stuff that's a little more raw and dark and underground uh, and, you know, away from, uh, you know, away from the dubstep kind of American kind of stuff. I like the, the deeper, weirder, yeah. bassier, trippier stuff. So, um, and for me, all that stuff fits together really well. Like you could, as a DJ, I've had really, you know, the few times I've played in the last couple of years, I've had fun mixing electro and breaks and bass music and techno and with lots of syncopation and getting away from just a 4-4 kick all the time. So anyway, I, I do a label with sure. the, my friend Jason, um, Jason Shostek called Serotonin Records. We've been doing that since the 90s, occasionally putting out weird electro and experimental kind of breaky music. And uh, this is something I'm taking that kind of feel, but then adding this more melodic and uh, sort of soundtracky, you know, 80s Vangelis sort of vibe to it. Yeah, it's amazing how I guess I didn't even realize the electro vibe with those synths on top mm-hmm. you know i was so focused on the expansive soundtrack kind of vibe and that once you muted those it's like wow that was there the whole time that's there and you know and i'm already like i've thought ahead there's going to be a version of this without the like ambient chill big chords and it'll be just more beat and bass heavy and it'll be a different arrangement but uh, i just want to point this out this audio track here um is this is how this started actually and this is kind of, it's part of a process that I'm starting now where I, uh, I, I'm going to just record single synthesizer jams and sort of create like uh, evolving grooves. You know, so if you listen to this by itself, um, I recorded this with a with a Roland SH01, you know, which is the boutique version of their famous SH101, which is one of my favorite synths for making techno and electro music. Actually, it's one of my favorite synths. Period. It's a mono synth. It's really easy to use. It's got a built-in sequencer. You just type in a bunch, you know, play in a bunch of notes, and then hit play, and it does a crazy sequence, and then you tweak the knobs. It's kind of like you know tweaking a 303, and um, you know, I put some effects on it, and I just recorded myself doing this for six seven minutes with an arrangement in mind so almost as if you're live just, doing live performance you know and this is kind of the on the creative sound design part of the uh, of the of the, uh, of, of the, of the, the concept it's like the creative and creative sound design well no it's just like i'm i'm performing music right i'm thinking of like tension and release and contrast and different sections and like building up and breaking down and like I'm not just randomly turning knobs necessarily I'm trying to and it takes a little practice to do this but like this would be like you know playing one element of a track all by itself without the rest of the track I'm kind of imagining in my mind as I play with the parameters of the synth you know this is very hands-on um and I'll just improvise with the synth parameters and, you know, if you listen to any more kind of underground techno stuff, you hear stuff like this all the time. This is like a big part of that style, these repetitive patterns that evolve. And and I see that it's kind of chopped a little too. So you're not really, you're not locking yourself in to oh saying, no. okay, what I did in that one take. You're like taking it and then chopping it up. Well, you know, this is what I recorded. And then, of course, you make mistakes. But the the, 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 the part of this that, you know, th- this that comes after. Like, you record yourself just fooling around, and then you go back mm-hmm. and you say, all right, let's listen to it. And then inevitably I'll hear a part where, oh, that part happened too soon, or there I turned the wrong knob and it sounded bad. So then I, I may go, when I'm shaping it into a, a piece of music, I go back and edit. And uh, so that's what happened here, right. is that I rearranged it a little bit and cut some parts out, to because I, it was longer, you know. It was like over seven minutes, seven and a half minutes of recording, and I, the track is now start to finish six minutes which is still a little long actually i think i might like remove one of the the sections um but uh so yeah it's just like raw raw material to to and so this could i this you know i could do this all day i could just hook up synthesizers and put effects on them and record myself and then they could be this could be a piece of music on its own like if i get 
if I set up enough and with enough with effects and, and performing and creating enough variation and then maybe even melodic changes or harmonic changes, chord progressions, this could actually be like a minimal piece of music on its own. But then I could right. also, or it's sample material. So like this could, you know, I could chop this up into loops uh, or, you know, it's really, it's like a, it's sort of combining the synthesis and sound design and the composition into one process to give myself building blocks for new tracks uh, and raw material for whatever I want to do. So, and you're often blending hardware and software. Yeah, I'm, I actually, you know, I, we mentioned earlier, this is my first stream and uh, I'm still technically getting the setup down and one of the ideas was to have multiple cameras and have the synth hooked up so you could see my hands and all that stuff. Ooh, maybe We've a got, future stream. We, and then even like the webcam that I was setting up before was dropping out. So now I'm using the built in, uh, but next time I hope, hope to have my, my camera game on point and then we can actually like use some external hardware and see some knob tweaking and some so, demonstrating some of what I'm talking about here. Right. So anyway, um, yeah, it's funny. There's, as far as sound design goes, I guess that this audio track with the SH01 is is a little more on that lines. You know, I designed that sound and I tweaked it in real time and I put effects on it. But a lot of the other stuff is samples. The percussion is samples. Uh, People were interested in the percussion. If you want to look a little deeper into that, sure. So I have very few samples on this computer I'm using, and this one, Wave Alchemy synth drums. It's not the newest sample pack i have had it a while but lately the sounds in here are floating my boat and uh, i could this is this is another thing this is like time saving i know how to make sounds like these but this whole pack is awesome so i it, it, it's really like oh you can't even the preview's not routed through i'm sorry i'll have to actually drag them in but let's listen to some I of the i could hear it i think let's i i didn't if you heard it i didn't oh um <laughs> so Let's listen to, right, so this sound, for example, this is what it sounds like all by itself, right? So it's, you know, it's like a, it's a, it's a synthetic gong, basically. So it's a little bit similar to what I was doing with Collision earlier when we yeah. were doing the metallic stuff, but it's got a little more bottom end to it, right? Yeah. Right, and, and th there's that with just a, a, an echo preset on it. Right? And it creates this kind of thunderous, almost kettle drum type effect. And then, that, I mean, this is literally like my favorite echo preset. I have to stop using it. Um, it's this, <laughs> I know. I've noticed it a couple times. Yeah, tonight. no, I know. I'm like I'm a little embarrassed. I'm like supposed to be the sound design guy. And like here I am using a, a presets from Live Library. But actually, that's also good because no, that's good. they're good. Then they sound, you know. Yeah. But basically, it's randomly modulating... Uh, the filter frequency like to an eighth note so that you're hearing it getting brighter and darker like a rhythm you know you hear it like and so that that yeah. kind of adds like a, a rhythmic groove to that one uh strike um and then we have i like occasionally using sort of a tuned percussion so like it'll, it, it's a percussion sound but it's playing a note that's in in in, in tune And this one, I just rather, I, I, at first I, I put like an echo on it, but instead of doing just a regular old delay, I, in simpler, I, oh, I just a turned a loop on. Yeah. So normally it would yep. just sound like that, but I wanted it to play longer, but then it also has this kind of uh, pulse as, as it loops. You know, if I reduce the fade, it sounds more repetitive, more sort of echo like but then this is sort see, of see that's synthesis even though that's a sample that's synthesis well this is a this is doing subtractive synthesis to a sample you know like it's also there's a filter on it that's what it sounds like without the filter but then i also have I'm, I'm taking away the high frequencies making warming it up a little bit and then yeah then there's it's boosting the resonance around a thousand hertz um and there's that, there's no envelope on it, so this is really just this is I'm shaping the tone of the sound, and then we have that little wobble of the loop repeating. Um, this one, 
Not too much. This is just, this is a kick. And, you know, this is all mixing, because that kick sounds pretty similar to... Oops. Trying to get all these guys in a rack. And just turn them all off at once. So, it's just a nice, solid, simple synth kick. And, again, this is something that you know, you could easily make, you know, even like live has the, the DS, the drum synth and the DS, like this kick, for example, would be very similar. I could get something very similar out of it, or I could make it with any, you know, any synth that has good envelopes and pitch modulation. Right. But this is a time saver. I know that I, that this kick that I like is in that pack and I just throw it in, but then, you know, the processing and that's, that's another story, like the mixing, but I've got uh, saturation. I'm using the dr live's drum bus to do even more saturation and compression and some transient yeah. shaping. And then, did anyone ever tell you never to put reverb on a kick? I've heard that before. Yeah. Is, are we going to break the rules today? Always. There's, I, I, Always. I, I like the sound of the... It's All right, it's mono, you'll notice. right? I'm not going to cause any crazy low-frequency phase issues. It's a mono reverb. So I like that big cavernous boom that i get well that's a very techno thing right sure <laughs> um you'll know i don't know if you noticed like when i brought the size of the reverb down it actually gets more bassy more resonant more boomy it does, the larger yeah. size is more diffuse more open right so if you want ex exaggerated rumble a long, a smaller size sometimes. Right? Anyway, I like the sound of, of the kick through reverb sometimes. Uh, let me, I'm going to go back and undo. So I go back to my original sound. Right? It actually wasn't that exaggerated. It's just sort of subtle and filling up some space. Right? Then we have. All right, that's another sample, but I've got some effects to sort of shine it up a little bit. Have you ever seen this? I haven't. What is this plugin? Uh, the disperser. It's I don't even know. Honestly, like we'd have to go to the web. Width or no, it's I don't even understand exactly what it's doing. We would have to go read the spiel on their on on the on the website. <laughs> For this developer to see kilo hearts right disperser it does some weird stuff it sounds really really cool i just want to say um you, you, can we a b test that again real quick i don't like, think it's it really enough. subtle huh now you can kind of hear all right but it's funny because the effect that the disperser does sounds kind of like what this zap sound is kind of going right uh, okay. um, and uh, it's it's exaggerating it, but it also does some weird little thing to the to transients in the stereo image. I'm not even sure exactly w what's going on with that processor. I just it's not a new plugin, but I just was playing around with it recently, and it sounds really great for these kind of zappy electro things. And then I put it on. I actually think I I put it on the the SHO one wherever that went. Here you go. So there's like a little bit of a subtle thing. Yeah. Oh, no, there's the, that's a, I took it off. Oh, no, there it is. Right there. There's the disperser. First one. Exactly. I almost forgot. And again, it's a really subtle thing that may not even, the difference may not even come through the streaming audio. Why is it so quiet? Oh, because I took the all the compressor off and everything. There we go. Let's get rid of that delay for a second. Tell, see if you can tell what the sound, what this thing's doing. That's without. Yeah. It's adding this little like snappy, zappy layer to it. Transients are almost clear. Yeah. It's really cool. It's really subtle. I mean, that's exaggerated now. Ah, uh, okay. The 
it's like different harmonics in the transients almost. Anyway, you, you get it, right? And then I put a phaser on it, which is doing a crazy stereo thing, and then, then I have all the mixing stuff after it, so. And I'll say, John, we're coming up on our final five minutes, so oh if there's my any goodness. gems left in this project that you'd like to dive into before we wrap, All right, let's yeah, do it. I, I'm going to show you one thing I did with the bass, because it's a weird trick. And so I'm using... A lot of times with Electro, you'll have these like punchy kicks, and then you'll have really boomy, long, subby kind of kicks. So that's what this guy is doing. Um, and it's actually, it's a long, boomy kick drum, but I made a bass line out of it, which is, you know, not on you. You hear that with like 808s and stuff, right? So that's kind of what this is. It's like an 808 style bass. If, but there's a, some other sort of texture, overtone, mid range stuff going on to it with it. And that is all coming out of this. Uh,. There it is. Ah, uh, okay. So this effect is called Corpus. It's actually the resonator from Collision that we saw earlier as an audio effect. So you can run any sound through it and, and resonate that physical model with whatever. So, you know... Mind blown. I was listening to... You know, I like just the... This sounds great. It's like a sub. Yeah, that's but that's totally different. And then... You know, I've had saturation, so it's warming it up. It's increasing the overtones. That you know, that's really important. I, this is everybody's talked about this in YouTube videos about mixing bass. But like, you need to warm up the low, ultra low frequency so they translate on on speakers better. So like, because most people can't, the twenty and the thirty hertz doesn't come through, right? But you you saturate it and it brings out the overtones, the harmonic overtones, and then you hear the higher frequencies, and then you hear the bass more prominently. You know, without kind of unbalancing it right it sounds like the bass is loud even though it's not too loud and it sounds like you, you tricks your brain into hearing the sub even when you can't so that's what the saturator is doing and then you know it's there's no other it's a stereo sample i think and there's a little you can see there's a little bit of width to it but i've got the this utility putting the sub frequencies in mono and leaving the the mids to be a little bit wide but it wasn't i wanted it to cut through the mix more without make going to, and changing the sound to like a bright sawtoothy grindy thing i wanted it to be subtle so that's when i came, thought okay let's add harmonics to it with the resonator and so that's really that's what this is doing And actually, if I inc I can make that even brighter. Right, and then this corpus and, and also resonator and collision, it has this really cool stereo imaging. You're hearing different frequencies of the resonator on the left and right, and you can tune that with the listening left and the listening right and the hit. You can sort of shift those overtones around in, in stereo and makes things sound super wide. And then... The other thing is that this resonator is following the MIDI input from the bass. So it has a side okay. chain, but it's not actually, um, it's not an audio side chain like you'd route a signal into a compressor to make it duck. It's just routing the MIDI output of what's playing the, on the bass clip, you know, what's playing on this track, into the the corpus and transpose, it's, I have it transposed down like, a whole you know three octaves basically and then it's following the melody of the bass so the resonator's in tune with the bass if i turn that oh. off it just rings at whatever Got pitch it. if i turn that on just receiving the pitch information yeah so the resonator is being tuned by the midi notes so that lets the, wow. so that's how I was able to get those the overtones and the the ringing kind of effect that it's creating in tune with, with the bass. So, yeah, that's great. Wow, we've we've done so much tonight. We've opened up uh, we've opened up a whole can of worms. And synthesis for me is not something I am uh, super fluent or comfortable in. And a lot of these devices in Ableton tend to look a little bit scary. But when you explain them, uh, they don't seem so scary anymore. You know. I'm glad you feel that way. <laughs> um, 
do you want to tell the folks at home a little bit about what they can expect if they were to join your class that starts next week, that starts on Monday? What What do your students kind of take away? Do they take away this wealth of John Selway knowledge and fluency in synthesis and sound design? I would say I would. we open the door to that because, you know, to be realistic, there's only so much time and all, and there are so many possibilities. So right. the idea for me with the, with the synthesis course is to introduce all of the possibilities. And so, you know, there's a couple of classes on subtractive synthesis, a couple of classes on FM synthesis, on using wavetable synthesis, uh, physical modeling, like we saw today, um, using sample based synthesis, granular, um, and then that's the bulk of it. Uh, we can, time permitting, look at things like additive, and um, there are you know modal synthesis. There's some other weird stuff you can get into. Uh, mainly, you know, the first goal is to you know, as musicians, as composers, as producers, to be aware of the possibilities, to know where to look to find them. Um, and you know, you may only be working with presets but getting to know the instruments so that you can be more creative with the presets to tweak them comfortably, to make them your own. And then also to start knowing how, you know, where to start in terms of making your own sounds. Um, but I really want to put the emphasis on like the production and the music making part of it. So, you know, honestly, we're not always going to sit there and just like go through recipes of how to make this sound, how to make that sound. Uh, I do encourage students to bring examples and to, you know, for, because I like to do ear training basically to like, let's listen to that sound. Let's hear what the elements of those sound, these, the sound is. And let's, you know, l using what we've learned of, of how synthesizers work to create something like it or be led to a new thing by that attempt. And it, so it comes down to like understanding the possibilities, learning how to listen to those details and then how to c apply what what you've learned uh, creatively in your own production. So I do like to do a lot of in the context of producing stuff. Like it's really great when a, a student comes into the class and shares their work and we, we do the synthesis and sound design in the context of their project. So yeah. um, that's, that's pretty much most of it right there. And, you know, there's a set curriculum uh, you know, there's like certain classes covering certain subjects, but there's also freedom and flexibility to explore. And I, I really encourage students who want to like interact and ask questions and uh, sort of like take things in, in, in a new direction when appropriate. So, uh, yeah, I want there to be I want it to, it's as much like a, a workshop in a two way street, you know, a back and forth as a converse in a conversation as it is like me teaching you X, Y, Z. So, uh, yeah, and that's that's one of the best parts about this whole situation is like even though we can't be together, you know, at the school in New York now, anybody from around the world can take classes. Let's can take this synthesis course, and it's still like a classroom situation. You're still interacting with your fellow students in the class. It's still that two way street that you talked about, John, where you in, you're interacting with your teacher, and it's a back and forth. It's going in the direction that the class wants. And I think that that's important, especially when we're all stuck in our homes, unable to interact and unable to have that social connection. I think this is a really beautiful way to do it. And before we go, I just want to throw out some more shouts to the chat. Uh, David Schwartz, thank you for hanging out in the chat. Live Society, DeBoss, welcome. So glad you're here. Jason Orell says, yeah, 343. That's what I'm saying. DJ Swats, everybody that was here from the beginning, Norbug, I know there's a lot of folks. Slithery Slime, Capel was here earlier, I believe. Regine in the 343 Labs chat. Juliana, Ben Ang, DJ Frio, DJ Feo, sorry. Um, Faye had to jump. Par Paratosh, who was in here earlier asking questions. Thank you all so much. And again, guys, if you are interested in a class and you, you liked what you heard, at least head to the website 343labs.com it's in the description on my video it's in the chat on the 343labs stream check it out just see what there is to offer and at the very least go to the events tab because there's tons more free events like these happening and there's also feedback sessions which i believe happen on sunday meaning you show up you enter into the the zoom you bring a track with you and one of the instructors lets you present your track 
and you get valuable feedback, not just from the instructor, but from the community. So I think it's a really cool way to also bring community in this time of quarantine, all of that. But John, thanks so much for uh, hanging out and sharing those cool ideas with us. Oh, my pleasure. I, I enjoyed it. It went uh, pretty well. So uh, I think so. Yeah. yeah. I feel I feel happy uh, that I was able to do it and. I'm looking forward, actually looking forward to, uh, to doing this again. So hopefully I'll be able to get on and do some more stuff. Absolutely. All right, everyone. I hope you all have a great night or morning or afternoon, depending where you are in the world. And thank you so much for tuning in. Very good. See ya.